Well, good morning. It's uh, March 20, 20th, 20th, yeah, 20th, right, March 20th, 2021, and uh, this is the corner tank. Still uh, very crowded, of course, but uh, doing well. And you see right in the center there that black molly with the sail fin uh, is going down toward the bottom there. Is uh, from the office tank, moved out here to give those females some company. Sword tails are doing very well, as you can see with all the orange here. And uh, a lot of guppies from the office tank finally moved out here. Uh, some of the split tail that you've seen before. And uh, let's see if I can show you something else. <clears throat> The kabamba over in the left hand side here is still being eaten by the fish, so it's kind of scraggly, but it's thriving. And then in front of it is that ever growing, uh, not sure what to call it, but you see where it's coming from over here, where the uh, growth from that initial cutting that we got from Disc Madness has just overtaken this corner of the tank. It, it's amazing to me over time to see how the different plants will thrive under different conditions. And I don't know what's changed because it, the water changes yesterday. I do about a third uh, once a week, roughly. And that plant has just kept thriving and split it off into what you saw a little bit to the left there. Uh, Trying to think what else is new in here. Not probably much. Uh, we uh, looked for some of the gouramis that we put in here, and they're so small. It's amazing to me, as I think I said in the last video, how you can go to a store and you can pick out some fish, and when you come home and put them in the tank, my God, they're tiny compared to when they were in the tank by themselves. And in comparison to each other, they all seemed a reasonable size when you went to buy them. So. That's just uh, the way it is. No big deal. And so that Amazon sword plant in the back is uh, continuing to be the showcase for this particular tank. You can see what I mean by that plant taking over this tank. And uh, certainly it was a worthwhile investment for what the cuttings that I was complaining about some long time ago. But that Amazon sword plant continues to be a huge huge plant and doing very well in here. And then over here you have some of the cuttings from that plant. And it's filling up this left side also. A couple of fantails are doing well, as you can see. Split tails, females. I'm surprised, I'm pleasantly surprised, because I always try to get them uh, my female guppies all have colorful tails. And you can also see in the, in the foreground here uh, two of those pearl gouramis and how small they are. And there's that female sword tail that's doing so well. And that's our young mate. So I went for a long while with wishing I could find some sword tails, and now we've got quite a few here that are doing very well. And there's that male black molly that I was telling you about. I'm not raising his fin for us right this minute. Continuing to be a showcase for this particular tank. We've got some uh, tetras, uh, what else? I don't see the uh, tricolored sharks or the red tail sharks. Uh, they are usually hanging out in the front here chasing each other all the time. Uh, not happening right now. The, the zebras that were so small when we first bought them are up toward the top and they are growing out. They're getting to be a decent size now. And so the fish tend to hide in that, that planting to the right. And uh, 
very pleased with the black mollies how they're doing especially as we're growing them up from our own young ones here now the uh, female sword tail right in the center there has um, gotten really big uh, grown up and uh, I did breed her uh, over in the now maternity tank instead of that split beta tank but we'll show you that in just a minute we have some babies both black mollies and the uh, pineapple swords and a bunch of guppy babies over there that I'm feeding frozen brine shrimp to only about uh, two of the neon tetras are left from that disease that sort of attack them. You see them off to the right toward the bottom there. And so let's move. Now here in the bow tank this has been uh, a tragedy of recent in the past week. Uh, the two clown loaches that were growing so nicely here uh, came down with ick and we couldn't do anything about it. Uh, the more research I did, I realized anything that I treated them with would cause disasters for other aspects of this tank, be the plants, if I put in too much salt. Uh, they wanted you to scrub the substrate uh, with some way planting. That was next to impossible. Um, raise the temperature to 86 or above. Uh, that was impossible with some of the other fish that would be affected by that. And so what we see here is my wife yesterday on her own had done some research and uh, came up with an approach that said take your plants and the blackened part of the leaves are where the ick is resident so cut them off and so uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not but if you look at the valves that are right down here toward the front um, she took each one of those plantings and did a, a very careful cutting. She's, she's the gardener, okay, let's, let's face that fact right up front. She's the gardener and uh, she trimmed all the valves which were uh, up to the top of the water here down to what you're seeing right here and as a result uh, she took this tank completely apart we vacuumed out a lot of the sand gravel and uh, I'm having trouble with my new camera here or the tripod that I'm using rather um, the other camera lost its zoom capability so I replaced it with a another one off of eBay. It's got a nice price on it for only a hundred dollars. But the uh, other fish seem to be doing okay. And by that I mean they're not coming down with the ick, so that's a good thing, right? But what you're looking at here is her type of gardening. And I especially love that frillied plant to the right there. Um, it's, it's doing amazingly well. We've got it out front now as a show plant. But all this planting uh, off to the left there, uh, you see what is the kabamba and uh, sorry about that. Like I said, I'm having trouble here. That's uh, right behind the angel's fish are uh, the kabamba, which is was doing so very well. And then, uh, in recent weeks, it's sort of settled down, so it's not thriving like you're going to see in the office tank. Uh, fish, the rest of the fish seem to be doing okay. We lost a couple of the serpe to the uh, ick, and uh, we've got our fingers crossed. Uh, but again, uh, she took action, and uh, hopefully that's going to address the situation. Here's that frilly plant I was telling you about. It's amazing how well that is done. It's a very pretty plant. And uh, what else do we have in here? 
the uh, clown plecos that we were talking about last time. Uh, it's amazing. She is the one that spotted those. I've never seen them before. And they, as we said before, turned out to be very young, uh, small plecos, which is what we were looking for, something to replace the big ones that we had uh, just gotten new homes for. But she's been able to find them in here. I don't think I'm going to see any right now. They are so small, but she spots them. And they're supposed to be slow growing, which is what we're looking for. And uh, it's been a, an adventure. And she can spot two or three of them. Well, we lost one of those the other day. So, again, uh, probably to... We, we weren't sure if maybe we introduced the ick when we brought those three in. I, I don't have uh, either facilities uh, to quarantine when we bring things in. And so that's uh, an issue which I haven't had any problems with in the past, but obviously uh, somehow we got ick in this tank and I don't really know how. Uh, and it, it was devastating. But maybe we've gotten ahead of it. We'll see. The tank's looking pretty good today. Uh, yesterday you couldn't, couldn't see the back of the tank because of the getting everything disturbed and getting a lot of the debris out of that gravel. So anyway, that's what's going on here. Uh, nothing spectacularly new in this particular tank. We did get some rummy nose, and again, when I put them in here, I said, what the heck? How did they get so small between the fish store and here? Uh, and we've lost a couple of them, but there's still uh, at least two left in here that we've seen. And so, say la vie, or it is what it is, as my wife would say. Let's move over to the beta tank, or not the beta tank anymore, but what's become the maternity ward, and you're going to see that there's uh, just a bunch of babies up there now. I took the divider out, and without the divider, this is just a tank full of babies here. So there's about a dozen black molly babies in here that you may or may not be able to see, and uh, some sword tail babies, all of which were birthed here when I put the females in one side and then the other of the divider. And so I'm feeding these uh, frozen brine shrimp. They seem to be doing okay. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet in terms of this particular tank. But uh, like I said, there's quite a few babies in here. And I'm trying to see if we can show you any of them. You can see some of the black mollies. About a dozen black mollies as I count them. All in all, there's about 35 fish in here. So, taking on a new uh, purpose instead of being a betta tank right now. And I don't know what I'm going to do. We're, we don't have any bettas right now. So, uh, we'll see. And now here in the office, uh, the office tank, like I say, the kabamba here is doing very well, and it reminds me often of a childhood memory where our next door neighbor had, uh, I think it was a, a long 20 gallon tank that uh, was so filled with anacris, I guess, that uh, you couldn't see the fish unless they came close to the glass, which they did and made for fascinating. You see a, a ram there, an electric blue ram, beautiful fish. And then the black mollies, which uh, I complained they were, weren't getting bigger. Well, they've gotten bigger now. And so that's no longer a complaint. Uh, this is mainly a guppy tank, although you do see uh, quite a few other types of fish in here, including some sword tails And uh, there's the two clown loaches in here that don't have the problems that I had in the uh, both tank with the ick, but you do see down here, I don't know if I can capture them or not, uh, the electric blue rams. There's one, I don't know if it's a male and a female, but one is more colorful than the other. And uh, the black mollies are doing beautifully in here. They're really, uh, there's the clown loaches. There's the clown loaches. 
they're doing very well. We did move out that uh, cave that they were so crowded in, I thought. And I feel much more comfortable we put a different, uh, more spacious hiding place for them, which they tend to stay with. And so this becomes my, my relaxation. But uh, it's interesting too. I've been able to add a third monitor to my uh, computer collection here. There's that RAM. I gotta use a different tripod next time. This is a pain. They even fit in it, but they did. This is the uh, new so three monitor setup that I have here in my office. I've always seen these in some high tech movies, and I thought that'd be really cool. Well, the opportunity presented itself recently. Uh, we had an extra monitor, as it turned out. And uh, I said to my wife, I said, well, rather than just leave it here in the box, why don't uh, I use it? Just go for it. And so uh, what you're watching here is from an earlier video uh, in the background, just showing off uh, what we're doing. So it's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Having fun. And like I said, just feeling very uh, high techish with the three monitors here. All right, we're uh, we're going to sign off now. I'm wishing you a happy springtime, and uh, hoping that your fish are doing better than mine in terms of that ick issue. But uh, you can see that electric blue ram. So with that, hey, I wish you a happy Easter, wherever you are, and a big shout out to my friends over there in Northern Ireland, uh, who always writes with some detail on these, about these videos. Always appreciate that. So take care.